Welcome back to Telecom TV's Top 10 Mobile Moments, where we're taking a look at our 20 years of supporting MWC and its predecessor 3GSM. Now, handsets have always played a big role at MWC. Even in the early days, a new handset launch at the show attracted a lot of attention. There's always been this turf war between devices and infra, and inevitably, it's been the devices that gain the most press coverage. Well, we're at number seven in our top 10 countdown, and that means the king is dead. Long live the king. Well, they might not have invented the mobile phone, but they certainly ruled the roost when it came to mobile email. Research in Motion was the Canadian company behind the BlackBerry and the global crackberry phenomena. If you wanted access to your office email, and let's face it, that was the only email that most of us had, you simply had to have a BlackBerry. I had one for a few months and absolutely hated it. How about you, Ray? I loved it, still do. And here it is. Oh my goodness, look at that absolute classic. Well, when we first caught up with the BlackBerry executives, it was 2006 and the company was riding high. You've got about four million users. Close to five, just about in, five. In, in the States, I was going to say. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, how about the rest of the world? Oh, the rest of the world's growing very quickly, much, much faster throughout Europe and throughout Asia. We're seeing uh, spectacular growth in the, uh, outside of the, the United States. And, and so it's, it's about a million users and growing fast. Um, we have about 150 carriers launched around the world, another 100 in backlog that we're launching this year. So the solution is really growing fast. If you don't please the CIO, you don't sell anything. And I think we figured out that was job one. The second thing we did was we made our solutions 100% sold through carriers. So everything was about leveraging the carriers, making sure the carrier had a very profitable experience and that they integrated more tightly with their corporate customers. And so, and so your carrier is your channel partner. Then after that, you say, and what do you think of the handset? So it, but it, you first have to please, your, our top two masters are really the carrier channel managers and the CIO. And after that, everything else flows. And, and I think that was a big break from the traditional market where you just showed up with a nice new handset, it talked voice, and, and you moved on. So it was a very different model. And if you notice, the rest of the industry and the key industry participants are starting to realize that's the way you address the converged data wireless data market. It's a good strategy, you know, please the mobile operators and please the enterprise CIOs. The BlackBerry was after all an enterprise device, but then the whole world went mobile and consumers also wanted to check their emails and they didn't want to be told what device they could have. Well, it certainly worked, uh, at least for a while. Yeah, and still, BlackBerry continued to flourish, although the competition was heating up, not least from Apple. Now, we fast forward to the 2010 conference keynotes. What a great time to be a part of this industry. We know things are still tough in the global economy, but I couldn't be more optimistic about the industry and about BlackBerry. Yeah, well, you know, you might want to rethink that, Mike. Cracks were beginning to show in the Crackberry King, and you know, that year he bought the QNX operating system, which was intended to replace its legacy technology. And a year later, BlackBerry launched its first tablet device. Hi, this is Alex Kinsella from Research in Motion, and I have here with us our BlackBerry Playbook. It's making its European debut here at Mobile World Congress 2011. This is our seven inch tablet. It's powered by a dual core one gigahertz processor, one gigabyte of memory, and it'll come in three variations for storage, 16 gig, 32 gig, and 64 gig. Um, it runs our brand new BlackBerry Tablet OS, which is built on the QNX kernel. That kernel actually runs operating systems in power plants, um, automotive, military, so it's a, it's a professional operating system for our professional grade tablet. Well, unfortunately, 2011 was also the year it all started to go horribly wrong for BlackBerry. After a disastrous and infamous interview with the BBC when Mike Lazaridis walked out, RIM ended the year taking a half billion dollar write down on its playbook inventory. <laughs> and it all went downhill from there. Well, that rings vague bells, but it was a good idea in theory to go after that market, but. Good ideas, of course, don't always work out. 
No, so the king is dead, but long live the king, because the demise of the BlackBerry coincided with the rise of Android. And once Leila Mackey had finished up with the playbook, she headed over to Android land. Yes, Android land, where all your dreams come true. Hi, Leila here at Mobile World Congress 2011. This is my fourth year coming here, and uh, you know, from the last couple of years, Google has only been building up their presence. And today I'm joined with Tim, who's an Android developer advocate, and we're at Android land. So can you describe what this is? Well, I'm not sure whether you call it a booth or a stand, but it's, it's pretty big, and it's extremely green, as you may have noticed. Um, there's a large area here, out around the edge of the area where people walk by. We have a bunch of stands that are featuring 40 or 50 different interesting applications that are running on Android devices. Uh, you know, phones are interesting, tablets are interesting, but the applications that people actually run on them are what's really interesting. And for my money, the most fun you can have on the stand is walking around and looking at those programs. Now we've got a place where we're giving away smoothies over there, and there's a slide you can slide down, and then there's a bunch of people like me who are hiding in the back corners for people who come with uh, hard questions about Android. <laughs> and as you can see, it's a madhouse in here all the time. Tell me a little bit about your partners. I mean, Whole Eat seems to be dominated right now by Android. Uh, well, it's open source software. There's essentially no cost to get in. If people like working with mm -hmm. it, people like the applications that run on it. And so, you know, a low barrier to entry is, is a really big deal. So the reach is, is large, but what's surprising is that in 2008, the re reach was zero. It didn't exist. So I could go through the details, but let's just talk about where we are now. Right at the moment, there are 170 different Android devices that are going around on a, on a sushi boat arrangement back there, are for sale in almost 100 countries. We are activating 300,000 new devices a day. In Android market, there are 150,000 applications, uh, and all of these curves, if you graph them, are going up at an insane rate. It, it's, it's an astounding time to be in this business, and, and I'm just thankful to be in it because it's so much fun. Thanks for watching. I'm Leila Mackey, and see you next time. This sucks. Fun and frolics <laughs> there in Android land. Ray, what's not to love? Well, so many questions spring to mind, Guy, but the main one is, why weren't the smoothies green? Actually, that whole clip is like a bit of a bad dream. Yeah, some trippy Wizard of Oz vibe going on there. Of course, Android was created by Google, which brings us very nicely to the somewhat contentious issue around sharing data and privacy, very topical at the moment. For our final clip in this episode, here's Eric Schmidt, former CEO of Google, giving the conference keynote in 2010. The relationship that the operator is going to have with the device is going to get much more sophisticated. The operator will have, as we mentioned, a billing relationship, a support relationship, an ed educational relationship, a platform relationship, if you will. Google will also know more about the customer because it benefits the customer to tell Google more about them. The more we know about the customer, the better the quality of searches, the better the quality of the apps. They're different, however. The operator one is required, if you will, and the Google one will be optional. And today, I would say a minority choose to do that, but I think over time, a majority will because of the stored value in the servers and so forth and so on. I feel I cannot comment for legal reasons. Anything you say could be stored, processed, sold, and later used against you. Well, we place this moment at number seven in our top 10 countdown, but what do you think? Any memories to share with us? If you have, please get in touch, email, LinkedIn, or the form on the website. But stay tuned because coming up next is number six.